we're reading Nectar of Devotion and we're on chapter number three, just beginning chapter number three, eligibility of the candidate for accepting devotional service. So Srila Prabhupada writes, on account of his association with Mahatmas or great souls, 100% engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, one may attain a little bit of attraction for Sri Krishna. But at the same time, one may remain very much attached to fruitive activities <coughs> and material sense enjoyment and not be prepared to undergo the different types of renunciation. Such a person, if he has unflinching attraction to Krishna, becomes an eligible candidate for discharging devotional service. So, so here Srila Prabhupada describes that in the beginning somebody may be fortunate and he gets the opportunity to associate with devotees. And just by being with the devotees, because they're speaking about Krishna, we also become interested in Krishna. But at the same time, although we're attracted to Krishna, we're attracted to a lot of material things. We still have a lot of sense gratification. So Srila Prabhupada is explaining how even though we still had desire for sense gratification, somehow we become attached to Krishna. Recording in progress. So Srila Prabhupada writes, this attraction for Krishna consciousness in association with pure devotees is a sign of great fortune. It is confirmed by Lord Chaitanya that only the fortunate persons, by the mercy of both a bona fide spiritual master in Krishna, will get the seed of devotional service. In this connection, Lord Krishna says in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 20th chapter, verse 8, Lord Krishna speaks to Uddhava. So Lord Krishna said to Uddhava, he said, only by 
exceptional fortune. Does someone become attracted? Does someone become? Does someone become? What is happening, Archana? Are you sure we're now? Okay. I hope so. Okay. So. Lord Krishna says to Uddhava, only by exceptional fortune, good fortune, does someone become attracted to me. And even if one is not completely detached from material activities or is not completely attached to devotional service, such service is quickly effective. <laughs> การอุทิศบอกกับบุตรบอกว่าด้วยความโชคดีเป็นพิเศษมากเนี่ยใครบางคนเนี่ยถึงจะชื่นชอบค่าแต่แม้ว่าเขาเนี่ยยังไม่ส
and he can defeat their arguments. People who are opposing devotional service, he can defeat them. He understands that the goal of life is to develop love of God. And he, know, he knows that the, the goal of life is to develop love of Krishna and to worship Krishna. So this topmost devotee, the best devotee, this, he will strictly follow all the rules and regulations. And he's been trained by a bona fide spiritual master. And he followed all the instructions of his spiritual master. So he's been trained to preach and he can also become a spiritual master himself. The, the best, this best devotee will always strictly follow all the principles and all the rules and regulations. And he has full faith in the scriptures and he can understand all the knowledge. Sometimes people may come and argue and they will try to defeat him, but he will defeat them and he will convince them about bhakti yoga. But actually the top, this best devotee, he doesn't like to waste time arguing, but sometimes he, he will do it, but he doesn't enjoy it. And he, he doesn't waste his time trying to speculate, to understand things by his mind, but he understands everything based on the scriptures. So he's, he's, he's very fixed and very determined in his devotional service. In this way, he is considered the first class devotee. But he doesn't think himself to be first class, he's always humble. So then the second class devotee or the intermediate devotee, he has different symptoms. So he's not very expert on, on when, he, when he has to argue on the scriptures. He's, he's not very, he doesn't have a very good knowledge of the scriptures. But his faith is very strong. He's very convinced that the process of Krishna consciousness is the best. It's the highest knowledge. 
มีอย่างอย่างมั่นคงแล้วก็เป็นเป้าหมายแล้วคือรู้ว่าเคชันที่สำนึกเนี่ยคือดีที่สุด He is very devoted to Krishna, and he will, will offer all his worship to Krishna. But sometimes he may not offer. He may not give arguments about devotional service. He may not give the real conclusion about devotional service because his knowledge is not so perfect. แต่ว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยเขาอาจจะไม่สามารถที่จะอธิบายเกี่ยวกับการวิตนเสียสารับใช้ได้เพราะว่าความรู้ของเขาเนี่ยมันไม่มันไม่ได้สมบูรณ์ Just like some some people may come and they may put some questions, he may not be able to satisfy them with his answers. บางคนเนี่ยอาจจะมาแล้วก็ถามคำถามเขาอะไรแต่เขาอาจจะไม่สามารถตอบคำถามนั้นเนี่ยได้อ But at the same time, he is always determined and fixed in the worship of Krishna. And he knows to worship Krishna is the supreme goal of life. So the intermediate devotee, he will worship Krishna, and he will associate with people who are his equals. And, and he will give mercy to the innocent people who come and ask questions. But he will avoid the people who are atheistic and who come just want to challenge and argue, and he will avoid these people. Then you have the neophyte devotee or the third class devotee. And so this devotee, he doesn't have very strong faith, and he's also not very sure about who who is the supreme truth, who is the goal of life. So, because he's a neophyte, because his faith is very weak, he can easily his mind can easily be changed by other people. Just like somebody may come and say, "Oh." Oh, you don't eat meat. You should eat meat. You know, if you don't eat meat, you won't get protein. And he may be, he may think, oh, they're right. Maybe I should eat meat. You know, because he's not very strong. He doesn't have very good faith. He's a new devotee. Ah, จะมดเหมือนกับการที่เขาเนี่ยเริ่มกินเริ่มรับประทานอาหารเจแล้วก็มีคนมาบอกว่าโอ้เธอไม่กินเธอกินเจเนี่ยเดี๋ยวเธอจะขาดโปรตีนแล้วนะอะไรเขาก็จะเออจริงด้วยนะแล้วก็จะไหลตามกันไป So, uh, because it, because he has weak faith, he, his position is not very steady. But the second class devotee, he has very strong faith. He's not going to be affected. The second class devotee is not able to to answer all their questions. He's not able to defeat their arguments, but his faith is very strong. He's not going to give up the worship of Krishna. Sawakrapesong, 
เปลี่ยนความคิดใครได้แต่ว่าเขามีความสัทธาที่แน่นอนแล้วเขาไม่วันหันเหไปนจากฉัน But the neophyte, the neophyte devotee has no faith, and he doesn't, he's not sure, he doesn't know about anything, so he can easily be convinced to give up Krishna consciousness. And sometimes he won't be very steady in his devotional service. Okay, so then, Prabhupada continues. Prabhupada explains. He said, the, the, "In the in the Bhagavad Gita, we get more information about the neophyte devotee." In the Bhagavad Gita, it describes there are four classes of men who begin devotional service. They come. They come to Krishna to get some shelter from the material world. So that there are four different kinds of people. First of all, those who are in distress. Then those who are in need of money. And then those who are inquisitive and those who are wise. So these four four different reasons why people come to Krishna consciousness. <coughs> And the, the, although they come for some material reason, they're all pious people. They are pious because they've come to Krishna. Without being pious, they couldn't come to Krishna. They would go some other place. Just like people want knowledge, they could go many other places to get knowledge, but. The people who are very pious will come to Krishna. But we should understand the being pious. It's a very special kind of piety. It's it's not just any pious person, but it's a person who has actually done something pious for devotees. So, Prabhupada explains that these four kinds of people, they may go into some place of worship like a temple or a church or a mosque, and they will pray to God to stop all their. Problem, all their distress. Or they may be praying to God for some money that they have an economic problem. Or somebody may be very inquisitive. They may say that I really want to know. Oh God, please help me. Please show me the truth. I want to understand the truth. I want to understand the purpose of life. Please help me understand. Mm. 
but there's also the very special person who comes in knowledge. He comes to Krishna consciousness in knowledge. So he understands the greatness of God, but he's also a neophyte devotee. He's not a very advanced devotee. He just knows God is great. He may know God is great, but he doesn't know how God is great. So he's also a neophyte devotee. Neophyte means they are third class devotees, but they can be elevated to the second class or the first class if they get association with pure devotees. So now Prabhupada is going to give us some examples of these different devotees from the scriptures. So one example of a, neoph a, a neophyte devotee, someone who was a neophyte in the beginning, was Maharaj Dhruva, Dhruva Maharaj, the young boy who went to the forest to find God. So Dhruva Maharaj went to the forest because he wanted to get a kingdom greater than his father's. And when he went to the forest, they first he met Narada Muni, and Narada Muni taught him about how to pray to God, how to chant the mantra, and how to do devotional service. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj did great austerities for six months, and within six months, he became completely purified. And then the Lord came to see him. But Dhruva Maharaj told the Lord, he said, now I don't want anything, I'm fully satisfied, I don't need anything. So Dhruva Maharaj is an example of someone who came in distress, or who came in search of wealth. He came in search of wealth. And then Prabhupada gives an example of a devotee who was in distress and he prayed to God. So that, that, that example, that's Gajendra the elephant. Gajendra the elephant was in great distress when he got attacked by a crocodile. So the crocodile got hold of Gajendra's leg and wouldn't let go. And Gajendra was, didn't know what to do. He couldn't get rid of the crocodile. The crocodile was pulling him back in the water. Gajendra tried to get out of the water, but the crocodile wouldn't let him get out. So 
So Gajendra was in so much distress that he prayed to Krishna to please save him. And Krishna came and saved him. Mm -hmm. So Gajendra became a pure devotee in this way. And then we have the example of devotees who were curious. So this was the sages in the Naimasharanya forest who were headed by the sage Sonaka. So all the sages had come to the Naimasharanya forest because it was coming the beginning of Kali Yuga. And they knew Kali Yuga is a very bad time. So they came there to ask questions. And so the, they were always asking Sutta Goswami about Krishna. And so because they were always at, they were associating with Sutta Goswami, Sutta Goswami was a pure devotee and they became pure devotees themselves because they were asking questions to the pure devotee. And so his answers made them also pure devotees. And then we said one of the neophyte devotees, in, they have knowledge. So the example of devotees and knowledge who are neophyte devotees is the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras, Sanaka, Sanatan, Sananda and Sanat Kumar, they're all, they're the four sons of Brahma and they're very wise and they're very saintly. So they were very attracted by devotional service. And it brought them to the spiritual world and when they met the Lord in the spiritual world they also became pure devotees. Mm. So, mm. If, you, if, you want, if a person gets the association of a pure devotee, they can also become pure devotees. When we first come to Krishna consciousness, we are third class, we are neophyte devotees. But if we get good association, we can be elevated to second class and even to first class. Okay, so these four kinds of devotees these four kinds of devotees are described in several chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, they're described in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And we said the one thing which they all have in common is that they're all pious. And 
and they had that they had that special piety which allowed them to take up devotional service. If they were not pious, then they couldn't come to devotional service. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says like that. Lord Krishna said, only people who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and are free from the reactions of sin, then they can engage themselves in my devotional service with determination. If they're not pious and if they're not free from sins, they won't be able to come to Krishna consciousness. So we said the neophyte devotees are four different kinds, right? We have the distressed, the one in search of money, the curious, and the wise. If a man doesn't do any pious activities, but then he, even though he's in distress, he won't, he won't be able to come to Krishna consciousness. Instead of coming, instead of becoming a devotee, he'll become somebody like an agnostic. An agnostic, he doesn't know, he doesn't believe in any religion. Or he may become a communist. He just believes in the in the people. He doesn't believe in God. Yeah, there was a communist man, the man who founded the communism teaching. His name was Karl Marx. And he, he had wrote, wrote a book about the communist teachings. And in his book he said, religion is the opium of the people. Opium. Opium. Opium is a drug. Oh, oh okay. Uh, uh, so like that, people like that who are not very pious, they won't believe in God. And they don't think God can help solve their problem if they're in distress. And he prefers, to, he will just not believe in God. He thinks by not believing in God, he can avoid all the distress. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that there, of the four kinds of people who are the neophyte, one of them is the best, and he is very dear to Krishna, and that is the one who is the wise man. So if 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 one if the four men if if they become wise, then they will become attached to Krishna. We see the other man, the one who is in distress or the one who needs money or the one who is curious, they, all, they want something, they want to get something from Krishna. 
เราแห่งได้บุคคลประเภทอื่นเนี่ยคือเขาอยากจะได้อะไรจากคริชนาบางคนอยากจะได้เงินอยากจะได้สมบัติอยากจะคนทุกคือเขาอยากจะได้อะไรจากคริชนา But the one who is wise, who's got knowledge, he doesn't want anything from Krishna. He doesn't want, and he's not worried about being in distress, and he's not worried about getting money. คือเขาไม่มีความเครียดในการที่เขาจะไม่ได้มีความเครียดหรือว่าจะมีความกังวลในการที่จะหาเงิน He's happy just to have the knowledge about Krishna เขามีความสุขแล้วที่ได้ความรู้เกี่ยวกับ Krishna So from the very beginning is he's attached to Krishna due to, due to love ตั้งแต่ตอนเริ่มแรกคือเขามีความยึดมั่นต่อพระชนาเพราะความรัก And because of the knowledge he's got and because he studied the scriptures he can also understand Krishna he can understand that Krishna is the supreme personality of God แต่เป็นพอเขาเนี่ยได้ได้มีการศึกษาพระเวทแล้วเนี่ยเขาจะรู้ได้ว่าคริสต์นาเนี่ยทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้า Some people you know they read the books they don't understand Krishna as the supreme lord they think he's just an an ordinary person บางคนเนี่ยคือเขาอ่านหนังสือแล้วแต่เขาไม่คิดว่าคริสต์นาเนี่ยเป็นองค์พระวาสูงสุดเขาแค่คิดว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นบุคคลธรรมดา They think oh yeah Chris Chris Krishna, he's just somebody from history. He was a great man. They don't, they don't understand. He's actually God. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, after many many births, then one actually becomes wise. Then he will surrender to Krishna, Vasudev. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says that after the birth of the Lord, the Lord will become wise, and he will come to the realm of the Lord, Vasudev. Bahunam janmani bhuvanam 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 s a m a h a t m a s a d u r l a b a h a After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge will surrender unto me. Such a soul is very rare. ว่าหลังจากการเกิดและตายหลายต่อหลายชาติเดวิญญาณบุคคลเมื่อบุคคลมีปัญญาอย่างแท้จริงเขาจะสิโนราบต่อข้าและบุคคลประเภทนั้นเนี่ยเป็นที่รักยิ่งของข้า So the goal of knowledge the goal of knowledge is to surrender unto Vasudev Krishna จุดมุ่งหมายของความรู้เนี่ยคือหมายไว้เพื่อให้เราเนี่ยสามารถสิโนราบต่อ Krishna ได้ And one who is in knowledge he will know that Krishna Is the origin of everything and the cause of all causes. So the one who is in knowledge, he is better than the one who is in distress, or the one who is in need of money, or the one who is curious. อยู่ในระดับที่ดีกว่าคนที่มีความทุกข์หรือว่าคนที่อยากได้ทรัพย์สมบัติหรือว่าคนที่สงสัย So the one who is in knowledge is the best. He's very dear to Krishna, but at the same time, it's going to take a long time for him to become more advanced. คนที่มีความสงสัยเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยก็ก็ดีเหมือนกันแต่ว่ามันจะใช้เวลานานหน่อย 
And when he becomes actually advanced, then he will surrender to the lotus feet of Krishna. And he will develop love for Krishna. But we should understand that that person is not very common. It's very rare. It takes a very long time. So a wise person is very dear to Krishna because one, one reason is he doesn't want anything from Krishna. He's happy just to know about Krishna. So the other people, they're also pious people, but they may give up Krishna consciousness after some time. Just like the person may be in distress in the beginning, but after some time, then he may get over his distress. We met the one boy, a young man, and it was Mongolarti. After Mongolarti, we were chanting Japa, and and the, this young man. We were outside because it's very hot, so we were outside chanting Japa, going for a walk. And we met this young man, and he was very sad. And he told us he'd just had a big fight with his girlfriend, and his girlfriend told him to go. She said, "I don't want you anymore. Go away. Leave me alone." So he was feeling very sorry. So he lost his girlfriend, so we taught him, we said, come and, come and be with us, come and be a devotee. We, sh we got him beats and we got him, we showed him how to chant. And so he started, you know, he started chanting and became like a devotee and he was staying with us for some time. But then after some time he said, no, I want to go now. He said, I'm feeling better now. I forget that girl. I'll get another girlfriend. It doesn't matter. And so distress is temporary, and so after the distress people may give up Krishna consciousness. When they get over the distress, when they forget about the distress, then they may go away from Krishna consciousness, unless they have proper knowledge. In the same way, somebody may be in search of money. They have no money, they have serious economic problem, and they may become a devotee. They be, we tell them, just doesn't matter, you come and live with us, you don't need money, you can be a devotee. And so they become a devotee and they live with the devotees. So then, what happened? The devotee, beca he learns how to go out and distribute books. And one day he met a man and man offered him a job. And so when he got the job, he said, oh, I don't want to be a devotee anymore. He gave up being a devotee. He went to work for the man. 
แล้วก็หลังจากที่เขาเนี่ยได้เขาก็ไปแจกหนังสือสาวก็พาไปแจกหนังสือพอไปแจกหนังสือเขาก็เจอคนหนึ่งแล้วคนนั้นก็บอกเขาว่าโอเคเธอมาทํางานกับฉันไหมอะไรเขาก็ตกลงไปทํางานกับคนนั้นแล้วเขาก็บอกสาวว่าเออฉันจะไม่เป็นสาวแล้วนะฉันได้งานแล้วจะไปทำ And then there was another devotee who was coming. He was asking all the time many questions. He was very curious and he was always very very good to ask questions. But then after some time he stopped coming. So we we wondered what happened to him. Why he didn't come anymore? So then one day we met him, and we asked him, "Hey, what happened to you? Why are you not coming to temple anymore?" He said, "Oh, I don't have any more questions." <laughs> But the person who comes to the platform of knowledge, if they get knowledge, then they'll never give up Krishna consciousness. <laughs> So everyone who comes to Krishna consciousness, we have to train them to hear the knowledge of the scriptures. No, we may not be very good in planning everything, but. If we just learn the basic knowledge, then it will keep us in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada says, unless we come to the position of a jnani, or unless we become a wise man. We won't be able to stay. We won't be able to stick to being a devotee of Krishna. Mm. Now there are other people who are less intelligent, and these people may worship. Demigods. They don't worship Krishna. They worship demigods. So these people, their their intelligence is very small, because the result of worshiping demigods is very limited and temporary. So what does it mean to be a wise man? We said you have to become a wise man. What does it mean to be wise? It means first of all you have to understand that we are not the body, that we are spirit soul. But that's only the beginning. You have to go on from there. You should understand not only at the bare spirit soul, but Krishna is the supreme spirit. And we should develop the relationship with Krishna. We should give up the attachment to the body, and we should start to cultivate the relationship with Krishna. And so, if somebody is in distress or somebody is in search of money, so this is material life. This is their, they have material needs. And 
somebody needs money, somebody's in distress, they're worried about the body, the problem is with the body. But we're not the body. Why do they care about the body? And somebody is inquisitive. They're inquisitive. They have questions. They're a little better than the one who is in distress or the one who needs money. But the one who is inquisitive, who is just asking questions, he's also on the material platform. He's just listening to his mind. But the person who is actually wise, he will always be wanting to find Krishna. And he knows that Krishna is the Supreme Brahman and that we are also Brahman, we are tiny parts of the Brahman. So the one who is in knowledge understands that he is under, under Krishna, he is not Krishna, he is not equal to Krishna, but he is under, below Krishna. And he's very small and limited compared to Krishna. And Krishna is infinite, but we are very finite. We are very small compared to Krishna. So, so this is the relationship of the wise man with Krishna. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Okay, are there any questions today? No hand raised, but I can see in the chat box. Uh, Sati, Manuji, any questions there? Or oh, Yuvati Sachi has a question? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, Sati, you want to go ahead? Can you, Sati? Okay. Xiao Xiao. Xiao Xiao, Xiao, 第一个问题，请问一流奉献者就是纯粹的奉献者吗？纯粹的奉献者超越所有的规范原则，怎么理解的？呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，呃，
The intermediate devotee and the neophyte devotee, they may all be pure devotees. Prabhupada was asked, how many pure devotees are there on the planet? And Prabhupada said, how many members do we have in our society? So devotee said, oh, maybe there's 3,000 devotees. So then Prabhupada said, then there are at least that many pure devotees. But there are different levels of pure devotees. And then the second question was, is it if one is on the topmost level, does he above, is he above all the rules and regulations? No, one on the topmost level, he has to, he will follow very strictly all the rules and regulations. All the devotees, all the members of ISKCON, they all have to follow the rules and regulations. <coughs> all the initiated devotees, they're very, it's very important that they strictly follow all the rules and regulations. <coughs> Okay. Okay, you got it, Sachi. Uh, oh, Sachi, how oh, are you? Yeah. 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 So somebody offends a devotee to please another devotee, is it, huh? Yeah, yes. Mal Fong is a function, is it will a true, yeah, better function, sir? Somebody offends a devotee to please another devotee. So will we get a reaction for that? Well, first of all, I don't believe that you can offend a devotee just to please another devotee. What kind of... no devotee wants to see another devotee offended. Devotees should be kind and loving to each other and caring for each other. We shouldn't want to do harm to devotees. Uh, so you offend a devotee, it's very serious. It's a mad elephant offense. It can destroy all the creeper of devotion. Mm -hmm. 
คนเมือนชางบ้าที่จะทำลายสวนแห่งการวิตตนเสียจะรับใช้ทั้งหมดของเราไป so don't do that don't do like that don't ever try to you know offend the devotee on purpose it's very bad very dangerous นะว่าอย่าอย่าทำอาบาสาวกอย่าตั้งใจในการทำอาบาสาวก Always try, try to please the devotees. h o w t h i s t r y to please the devotees. l e t s s e e t s s e e t s s e e 那么为什么帕布帕德说他创造了我们的虔诚活动？啊哈 ，So four kinds of people, pious people, come and surrender to Krishna. Why does Prabhupada say that he is creating our pious activities? ในพระวจาบอกว่าสมุคนสี่ประเภทเนี่ยเป็นเป็นบุคคลที่มีบุญแล้วก็มาสิโลลาบต่อพิชนาว่ามีความทุกข์ทางวัตถุแต่ทำไมเสวพานถึงบอกว่าเป็นท่านเนี่ยเป็นผู้ที่สร้างบุญให้กับเรา Well I explained that I explained that the pious activities which we need to come to devotional service are not just any ordinary pious activity but they have to be pious activities in relation to devotees เหมือนกับที่ท่านได้อธิบายไปก่อนหน้านี้แล้วก็คือบุญที่จะมาสามารถมาในกิจการที่สำเนินได้เนี่ยมันไม่ได้เป็นบุญทางวัตถุแต่ต้องเป็นบุญที่มีความเชื่อมกับพุชนะกับการอุทิศตนเสียสละใจ There are many pious people but they're not devotees but their piety is not in relation to Krishna consciousness so they're not devotees แต่มีนักบุญมากมายเนี่ยที่เขาเนี่ยไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่เป็นสาวกเพราะว่ากิจกรรมที่เกิดบุญที่เขาทำเนี่ยมันไม่ได้เชื่อมกับสาวก But Prabhupada is creating our pious activities because Prabhupada is engaging us in devotional service. Just like when we take prasadam, that's a pious activity, and when we read, touch Prabhupada's books and read Prabhupada's books, that's a pious activity. When we go to temple, this is creating our pious activity. This is giving us a chance to become devotees. And การที่เราเนี่ยได้มีพระพานเนี่ยทรงเป็นคนให้โอกาสเราในการได้ทำการวิตนเสียสารับใช้เพราะฉันจึงสามารถบอกได้ว่าท่านเนี่ยเป็นผู้ให้การที่เราได้อ่านหนังสือพระวันได้ได้จับได้รับประทานประสาทสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยมันทำให้เราเนี่ยเพิ่มตรงนี้ขึ้น But if you give charity, you give your money to old people's home, or you give blood to somebody. You, you do some pious act. You feed the poor. That's not going to get you Krishna consciousness. Okay. All right. You want to say, Chimaraji? Need what's your question? Yuvati s a c h i Yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Chen Chen, you you have a question, but Chen Chen Mother Ji, you that question is about that Gopal Kumar. We will come in the morning to ask Guru Vidya, okay? Because today's class is a little bit different. Then later you have some questions that are not very clear. We will come in the morning to ask Guru Vidya. Okay? No other questions, Guru Vidya. Okay. Thank you, Guru Vidya. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yuvati Sachi, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances, O Guru Shishila Prabhupad. Uh, Guru Maharaj, is it possible to remember Krishna all the time on the level of uh, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, or it is possible only for uh, Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti? Well, it's possible. It's possible you could also remember Krishna on Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Generally, what happens with Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we remember more the rules and regulations more than Krishna. Of course, 
You could say, well, the rule, the rule is the, the most important rule is to always remember Krishna. So, yeah, and Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, you can also be always remembering Krishna. Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti is more Krishna in Vrindavan, which is different. But Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we can be remembering Krishna anywhere, not just in Vrindavan, Krishna in Dwarka, Krishna in Mathura. But, you know, Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti is more concerned with Krishna in Vrindavan. แต่ในมายิกธรรมะเราจะสามารถที่จะระลึกถึงคริสต์นาเนี่ยได้ตลอดเวลาไหมถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยอยู่ในระดับอ่าสาธารณะบัก
because on the third level, the third level, that person, he, 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 he usually just worships a deity, he thinks God is only in the temple, and he doesn't go any other place, he only goes to temple, and he doesn't see God in the hearts of the people. Vaishnavi? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yes, so Guru Maharaj. So he, he only he sees God in the deity, but he doesn't see God in the hearts of all the living entities. So he's not kind, he's not compassionate to all the living entities. Okay. But the second class devotee, he will be very compassionate on the innocent people and try to give them Krishna consciousness. Okay, so we have to be at least in the second class to go back to Godhead. Well, you may go back, <laughs> if, yeah, ideally, you know, we should, you'll become more dear to Krishna if you come up to the second class, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, but the, 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 so from today's discussion, I understand the initial point is we have to get the association of few devotees, that's the eligibility. Oh, yeah, you, well, you have to get association from some kind of devotee. You know, somewhere you have to get connected to devotional service. Just generally we give people the books, right? We distribute the books, and give people the association of Prabhupada through the form of a book. Yeah. And the holy yes. name, we give the holy name. The holy name is also coming through the line of disciplic succession. Yeah. And we give yeah. the prasadam, the prasadam is the mercy of Krishna, it's offered to the gurus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's clear now. So association, yeah, we, we get association with the Krishna consciousness movement. Our Krishna consciousness movement is to give association. It's not just, oh, this person's not a pure devotee, I don't want his... Any devotee, any member of the society, they're considered pure devotees. They're giving association. You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shaya has a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Tanavata Nam, please accept my humble office as the Bukhari to Sila Babupan. Ajana Ha. Ah. Give up one pair, Hanoi. He could be in Long Kong, Savo, Chansa, and I have been Savo, Timon, Munkawa, Kau, Munkab Abat, Savo, Kun, Unwa, Laptai, Medi, and Anyang Yele, Yaha. ก็เลยเจอลูกคนทางกรมราชว่าสาวกคนนี้เขาจะได้รับผลยังไงนะคะเพราะว่าเขาอาบัติสาวกคนอื่นทางที่ไม่รู้ว่าเขารู้หรือ
will think the material world is more enjoyable. แล้วกฤษณะเนี่ยก็จะนําเอาความสนใจที่เรามีต่อพระองค์เนี่ยออกไปแล้วกฤษณะก็จะทําให้มายาเนี่ยดูน่าสนใจมากขึ้นแล้
มูนี่คือเขาทำบำเพ็ญเพียรแล้วก็หน้าตาเขาไม่ได้ร้อน So then the yogi, so b a r i m a n i is a yogi at yoga powers. And so he changed his body. He made his body look very nice, look very young, look very good looking. And then he came back and he asked all the do all the princesses, "You want to get married?" And all of them wanted to marry him. So he got married to fifty princesses. They all became his wives. และหลังจากนั้นสุบาริมุนีเนี่ยเขาก็เป็นมุนีซึ่งเขามีพลังอิทธิฤทธิ์สามารถแปลงกายได้เขาก็แปลงกายแบบว่าทำโฉมเขาให้ดูดีขึ้นมาเป็นวัยรุ่นแล้วก็แบบว่ามีแบบดูดีจากนี้แล้วก็ไปใหม่ไปขอแต่งงานแล้วปรากฏพอหญิงสาวเห็ดเนี่ยเขาก็ทั้งห้าสิบคนนี้ก็อยากจะแต่งงานกับเขาหมดเลย So this was the result of his offense against Garuda. He ended up getting married and having fifty wives. Before he'd been a great yogi, great renounced, but then he ended up with fifty wives. อันนี้เนี่ยเป็นผลของการทำอาบัตกรุดาของสุบาริมุนีก็คือตอนหลังเนี่ยต้องมาตกต่ำลงแล้วแต่งงานกับมีผู้หญิงห้าสิบคนเป็นภรรยา So you have to be very careful not to offend devotees. เราจะต้องมีความระมัดระวังในการไม่ให้ตัวเองเนี่ยทำอาบัตสาวก Okay, we're going to stop here now tonight. Thank you very much for all your questions. Thank Archana for translation, and thanks the Chinese devotees for participation also. Sri l a p a d ki jai. Sri ki jai. Goodbye to Vrinda ki. Jai.